Hi everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming here, and I'm very happy to be in by data giving this talk. Um, so the topic for me to talk today is uh, finding relations in document with uh, everybody pronounces differently. Uh, I typically said yepi, but it's okay if you say it's something else. Um, so this talk about this talk is about. Um, some things you can do with information extraction and how you can use YEPI, which is a specific tool that, and an open source tool that we built at Machinalis, uh, to solve information extraction problems. I, uh, this is not a tutorial or a very technical talk. I'm just uh, giving a very brief introduction to information extractions for those ones who don't know what, what it's about. Uh, and I will focus mostly on what you can do with it, uh, what are the applications, and specifically what you can do with YEPI, where does it help, uh, what limitations or important things it has. Um, so uh, this is a URL for the projects. You can, you can get it from GitHub. Uh, so um, let me talk before getting deep into the topic uh, a little bit ab about me. I'm a computer scientist. I consider myself an application developer more than a data scientist. I'm one of the co-founders of, Ma of Machinalis. Uh, I work as a technical leader in projects there. Uh, Machinalis is a company that provides uh, other companies with development services, for, uh, especially for machine learning related applications. And I was one of the members of the development teams of Yepi. I'm not so active now. Other people is moving forward, uh, but it's it's a really interesting project, and it's about information extraction. Uh, extraction. Information extraction uh, essentially means that uh, you have some unstructured documents. By unstructured, I mean it's not a database. It's not specifically format. Typically, a natural language. Um, so for example, you can have news articles or Wikipedia or a private document base or patents or whatever. And you want to analyze that more or less automatically, automatically and get a structured data, a specific information that you can work on with other uh, data tools later. Um, so what, what we call, what we extract is facts that we put in the database. So, for example, what you can do with it, you can have a collection of a medical paper or, or research papers about genomics, as, as Sean was saying a while ago, and you want to uh, extract information about what, gene is, what genes express, which proteins, or stuff like that, just by having a computer read and understand, in quotes, the, the paper. Uh, you you want to make a database of relevant people and their birthdays uh, just by scraping and parsing Wikipedia. Uh, you want to know about uh, business acquisitions and funding rounds and stuff like that uh, from uh, news articles. Uh, you uh, this one is actually a, an, an actual project that someone did. Uh, Analyzing from social media po posts about, oh, oh, I ate at this place, and then, oh, I don't feel very well, and identify uh, foodborne uh, illness outbreaks. So there, there's really a, a wide range of applications and things that you can do with this. But, um, and, okay. but in general, uh, what you are doing is Finding relations, when I say relations, I say it partly in the mat mathematical sense, it's just a set of tuples, like you think in a database, but it's not just any set of tuples, it's a set of tuples that have a, a meaningful uh, significance or, or importance, and they are mapped to some real-world con concept that is described in, this, in these documents. Uh, those relations relate entities that can be any kind of item that is uh, mentioned in your documents. Uh, it can be people, places, amounts of money, organizations, genes, proteins, uh, whatever. Um, and you can do it, uh, well, all, all these works typically from a set of documents. 
And for this talk, when I say documents, I'll be talking about natural language text documents, and, and perhaps with some data, uh, metadata like the publication date or stuff like that. Uh, you can also do information extraction in other media, for example, identifying faces in videos or stuff like that. I, I won't be talking about that. that. So, for example, if you have a small snippet of text and you are, your entities are um, software libraries and programming languages and licenses, you can find a couple of interesting relationships that are like uh, library A is written in language B or library A is licensed as uh, license C or things like that. So an information extraction is about identifying these entities and identifying which things are related to which. Uh, I gave you a couple of example applications. Mo uh, most of my examples were based on public data. This is really interesting uh, also on, sorry, in, in public data. This is also interesting in, in private databases and it has really interesting applications. We have done some interesting projects for uh, finance companies that never let us speak about them, so that's a bit sad. But we did a public demo to show a bit of that on more public data, which is called Yebi Crunch, and the, and the demo is available on, um, online. It's, it also includes some visualization on, on the data extracted by Yepi. The Yepi does not do visualization, it's just that does the data processing. But the, uh, the topic of this project is um, working with TechCrunch, which is an online news magazine about um, technical companies and especially as about the business-related aspects of them. So we extracted uh, data from that site and uh, made analysis, uh, well, as the example I mentioned before, about the acquisitions between companies, founding rounds, etc identifying that, and we got the database of, of those events that we can visualize and, and show graphically. The interesting things uh, uh, of this demo for us is that actually the people of TechCrunch, which is a website and has natural language articles, uh, they also have something called CrunchBase where they keep a database format uh, of all these events too. So it's serves as, as a golden standard to validate that w the data we're extracting is actually good uh, and real. Uh, it's not mapped one-to-one -to -one because a lot of the events that are recorded in the database are not newsworthy, so tools for uh, every event, but you can check that the information that you extracted from articles, it's actually a real event. So, uh, with YEPI, uh, we analyzed a lot of these articles, extracted a lot of uh, a database with events. Uh, com this company raised this, uh, this amount of money in this time, or this company acquired this other company and stuff like that. And we generated some pretty nice graphs. Uh, uh, don't be mad at me because this has no y-axis, it's actually an interactive, so you can hover over the points and, and see the amounts. Um, so you, we have here a comparison of something we can measure between uh, the actual data from current trace and what we extracted. Uh, the red line is average money per funding according to their database, and the blue one is what we extracted. Have less data points, so our lines is a bit more noisy and prone to uh, outliers, outlier points when you average less data points. Uh, but the information we have is pretty interesting. And one of the interesting things of these applications is that um, when you when you get your database, you can link back those data points back to the, the original sources. So this, for example, a chart of uh, millions of dollars invested. So you can see in the database by aggregation that in January of 2013, there was $600 million of investments. But you also can uh, click there and see uh, which were the investments. And you can see uh, it's a bit low. 
but uh, I'm hovering over one of those links, and this is actually linked to a news article. Sorry. No worries. Uh, as I was saying, uh, you you can see uh, for each data point what are the sources and have the link to the original articles in the website that where this transaction is described. So you can go from your data points back to your, the original sources, and that's that's one of the interesting points of this. So how all this was done? Uh, we built this tool called Yepi. Um, or Yepi. Um, so it's a Python based tool uh, for creating uh, information extraction applications. It's, uh, you can use it as a tool, uh, you can use it as, as a framework. It has several defaults and built in components that you can use out of the box. And you can, can customize them a, a lot because for several domain specific problems, you need to to change things. Um, so the thing with information extraction is that it's still a hard problem. It's one of those things that uh, humans still do better than computers, still. So um, what we offer in Yepi is, uh, is a, a hybrid approach. You can do manual tagging of documents, but then this manual tagging can feed an uh, automatic learning system, an active learning system uh, that learns from that and try to tag additional documents for you. So uh, we built a nice web user interface because many times you want uh, people that are not data scientists but domain experts tagging your data. So it, it was important that it was easy to use. But what you need to do to create an application is uh, initially get the documents inside the YEPI database. Uh, YEPI manages a a, a, an internal document database. It's actually some Mongo database. Um, and well, we don't provide much tools to import data into it because you can get data from really different range of sources. We, we don't know, but uh, we have a CSV importer and you can write your own or convert your data to CSV. It's probably the point where you need to do more work at the beginning to start using it. Uh, but once you get the documents into the database, uh, they start going through a pre-processing pipeline where a lot of standard natural language processes are, are done, on it, done of it, uh, split into words, uh, marking the beginning and end of sentences, uh, tagging each word for, for its lemma, its root word, which is helpful to reduce information and, and make the, the machine learning algorithms work better than tagging part of speech, which words are known as adjectives, verbs, etc., which also helps the, the classifier. Uh, and this is done off the shelf by uh, the Stanford NLP toolkit, which is quite good. It's a, it's a Shaba tool, so it adds some complications to the installation of EAP because you have to integrate it, but it's not that hard. And it's something that also you can, uh, these steps are also something that you can change and switch by your preferred ones, or if you have some, some specific way of tagging or a different language or something like that, you, you can change these steps. And then uh, one critical part is entity recognitions because the first step in information extraction before identifying relations is identifying where entities are mentioned in the text. So again, there are standard uh, tools for that. The name entity recognition tagger from Stanford is pretty good for uh, some specific kinds of entities like names, places, uh, dates, amounts of money, stuff like that. Uh, but if you want to uh, look up entities into a, into a gazette, into a, a, a list of names, for example, looking up for, comp you have a list of company names, you can also do gazette resolutions, or you can add custom rules if you're working with something that has specific form like chemical compounds or proteins or stuff like that. Uh, so, 
a, a lot of metadata about the document is stored during preprocessing uh, into this database. This database, the idea of it is, is that you can also update it online if you have a source of information that gets new data over time. For example, a, a new source keeps publishing new articles that you need to keep preprocessed and updated. Um, and once you have that, you can start doing extraction. The most boring way of doing extraction, but it's available, is a human-based form. It's essentially, uh, you have a user-friendly interface and people can uh, click on those places where the relationships are, pres uh, are present. Uh, EAP helps there by identifying, it already has identified entities, so it focuses you on part of the text where entities relevant for your relation are, are present. For example, if you are uh, tagging an entity which relates organizations and locations, it extracts from your document all places where you have organizations and locations, and you can say, oh, this is an instance of user relation you're interested in. For example, this organization is located at this place. Um, and you can click, this is an example, this isn't, this is, this isn't, etc. Um, something that works also well, uh, and it's, uh, it needs less work for, need less human work, is doing rule-based extractions. Rules are still really simple to write and quite effective in the sense that you can get pretty accurate results. For example, if you're identifying birth dates uh, and you see a name followed by two dates in between parentheses, it's probably a birthday and, and a death date. Um, so by writing a rule, we have this meta language of kind of like regular expressions, but not on individual characters, but in words. Uh, you say, well, uh, subject, open parenthesis, objects, dash, anything. Uh, it's probably a true case. That's the rule true at the beginning of this relationship. You can also add rules for negative um, for ne negative examples of, of your relation. Um, and YEP also provides some tools, tools for testing the, these or debugging these and, and trying out your rules. And I think it's, uh, these tend to be quite effective. The, the, the examples you extract from rules are typically good. The thing is, it's not very robust. If there's a slight change in your input, uh, the rule will, will not find it. So that's where uh, you can use uh, active learning approaches, uh, which where you use machine learning methods. The classifier is customizable. Uh, we use by default uh, support vector machines with some predefined features, which are pretty standard in natural language processing. Uh, and you can and, and you can learn from what the human tag and what the uh, rule-based taggers tagged. So there's a classifier building. The built-in classifier, it's also tunable. You can uh, choose to have high precision or high recall. That means uh, trying to get uh, accurate results even if, if you miss some, or trying to have more results even if you have some false positives. So it, it's interesting that, that you can switch between one another. So let me tell you about a real use case. Um, sorry for the short history lesson here. Uh, I'm from Argentina. Uh, we have a very dark and shameful chapter in our history where the military took over the government and started uh, kidnapping and making disappear political dissenters and people who, are, who didn't agree with the regime. Um, so in this period, the, there were a lot of uh, people who were killed and never seen again with, uh, without trial and without keeping record. And those are called the desaparecidos. Um, and in that era, uh, also many times the family sort of, or those people were kidnapped. And the children of those people were given to in, in a clandestine adoption system to friends of the military. So today, most of this, most of the leaders of the time have been tried for human rights violations and, com and most of them convicted. 
but many people today about my age uh, do not know about their real identity. They are children of some other people and they are, were given an adoption and never told about it. Uh, so there are estimated like 500 people in this situation, only about 120 have been found. Uh, so there's uh, a government organization that was set up, well, actually many organizations. One of them was called uh, Archivo Provincial de la Memoria, which means Provincial Archives for Remembrance. And this is an organization that was given clearance to access classified military files from, from that era. A lot of files from that era were destroyed, but they tried to recover and digitalize documents to, to process them. And in collaboration with the Natural Language Processing Group at the University in Cordoba, Argentina, uh, which works very closely with us. Actually, one of the guys from this group is also a co-author of IEPI. Um, work together on this problem. And what they wanted to do is essentially uh, work on army bulletins where you have to identify uh, personal movements, assignments, and transfers to see who work with with in which uh, in which place mo most of which were clandestine detention centers and who who work with known human rights uh, convicted people to know where this uh, where these children may be well they're no longer children um, so they manually process a lot of these documents uh, tagged with metadata and uh, Using YEPI, they made the rule-based recogni recognizer for entities for a couple of reasons. Uh, Stanford NLP is not as good as, as for Spanish as it is for English. And also, military documents have a series of conventions that are useful. For example, all personal is always re referred in a standard way by rank, name, and registry number and stuff like that, so actually rules work pretty well to identify 25 people in there. And they, they did several, several passes of uh, information extraction. This is one of the interesting parts of EAP. You can mix and match, and you can decide at each step which way of extracting information is, is better at this step. So they started with uh, rule-based. Rule-based works pretty well, again, in military documents because they are very strict and formal in the language. So the way of writing about the personal transfer is very similar between documents. Um, once they have that, they captured a lot of examples. And they follow a machine learning-based approach to increase the recall and to detect uh, small variations of what the rules have already captured. They cleaned up by humans to, to validate these inputs to make sure that what they were detecting was, was right. And again, after those humans marked some negative examples, they retrain the classifier and make, make a new pass to detect and, and improve the, the results. So this is the kind of things that you can do switching between each other. And this is an, an actual application of, of YEPI. So, um, some of the results there to, to see what kind of changes you have when changing from one approach to another is like, is that you, uh, well, in this process, they mostly uh, double the amount of detected entities and relations when switching to a, to a classifier. Uh, for this case, the, the rule-based system worked pretty well. For other cases, you start smaller and the classifiers uh, uh, increases your recall much more. Um, but well, the, they really detected a lot of information on this document, so hopefully that will be useful for investigations in the future. So let me summarize a bit about um, what are the strong sides or bad sides of, of, this, of these approaches. Um, from our, our experience, uh, working in a single domain uh, improves a lot your success rate. In general, in any case of regularity in documents uh, helps, like I, I mentioned in, in my previous example. But uh, even if the language is not different, it, uh, it's, 
you'll have much more success in, for example, a database of medical research papers that if you go through Wikipedia, which is much wider in the range of topics that it covers. Um, what we have right now, this is more of a technical limitation, it works better on binary relations. Uh, my examples were binary relations, but for example, uh, actually you, you have some cases that uh, relations of larger RIT are interesting. For example, for acquisitions, you want to say uh, company was acquired by, by this other company by this amount in this day. So you have four, a, a four tuple in your relation. And it can be done with uh, YEPI. We did it for YEPI Grange, and these people did it in this case. But it's not the easier workflow. Uh, we need to simplify that a bit, but for binary relations, it works really well. Um, and it's interesting for what I call medium-sized data datasets. It means uh, some of these uh, steps that you do need to have a lot of information from your whole documents in memory, especially uh, when training the, the classifier. Uh, we, we don't support any cluster approaches or stuff like that, so you should have a data set that fits in memory. If your data set is too small, it's not worth the effort. For most of these, you can do it by hand, or perhaps you can use uh, uh, only the manual part of it. So I call that this is most useful on a medium size data set, something that is too large to do by hand, but uh, not as large as your memory. Um, so that's that's the sweet point. Actually, uh, many of the ma many of the parts of it uh, of YEPI uh, support some uh, parallelization. Uh, you can do the preprocessing it batches through documents. So you, if you have many cores or even ma many computers sharing your document database, uh, that works really well, and you can do it. But the the classifier the, the classifier uses the standard classifier at least uses scikit-learn. And it tends to use a, a single core and and load all in memory. Uh, okay. Uh, something else that uh, we found while working with this uh, are a couple of problems that uh, information extraction typically talks about entities, and we are detecting occurrences of entities and relations. Uh, there's a subtle difference. Uh, the thing is that some document might speak about Barack Obama and some other document may speak about the President of the United States. And those are the same entity, at least to date, uh, but uh, for YEP it's just two occurrences of a person, but you have some the normalized data there and you have to consider if that's a problem for you or you have to, to change things. There's also a, a similar problem about the temporality of events, especially when working with uh, new sources, uh, because you may get reports of past events, and you don't know, uh, YEPI does, doesn't provide a way to disambiguate that and to know when you have two reports of the same event or there are two different reports of different events. Uh, that was a problem when doing YEPI Crunch and you have, we, we needed to tweak a bit that because we have news about, well, as seen as in this acquisition last year and, and the acquisition last year was also reported last year. So we need to separate those events and, and not, not, not always you have the date to disambiguate that. So some tricks were needed there. Um, and another different kind of problems uh, that you get is that uh, you don't get the truth from, from this. You get what the document says. So seems a really simple thing to say, but, but it's relevant because when you work it, it, uh, with a large document database, you will find inconsistencies, uh, reports, uh, uh, information about the same event that is not, does not say the same about each other, and you will find errors or false information for whatever reason there is, but it's there. So if you're using this data for any further approach, any cleaning process or identification of problems is probably needed to, to avoid getting the problems that come with inconsistencies. So that's roughly what I have to say today. The, uh, a couple of examples of uses of YEPI. 
Uh, information extraction is a really interesting area. You have a really large number of applications. Uh, a lot of people are interested in this, so uh, if you want to talk more about it, uh, I'll be around. Uh, you can find me by email, you can find me by Twitter. I'll be around the whole conference and I'd be more than glad to talk about this. So thank you very much to, for hearing me.